last week we dealt with the fact that God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully, not partially, fully realized. We do not want you to become lazy but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. The beauty of love is that it never fails. Uh, today, I want to challenge our thinking. I think that I'll create some more time for questions just in case uh, some people have some questions on this. But the test we're going to be dealing with is 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13. I want to, I want to move to, to analyze verse 8 and then come back and look at the rewards because that whole test talks a lot about the rewards of, of uh, the kingdom. You know, in fact, let's read, read from 4. Read from 4 and um, uh, end up with uh, 8. And then I'll do some synopsis. First Corinthians chapter 13, mm. verse 4 to 8. Mm. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It, is not, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves, always perseveres. Verse 8, love never fails, but where there, is, there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. Amen. Amen. So, there's a little background to this test. This is a group of folks called the Corinthians. Corinthians uh, was, uh, or Corinth, was a province, one of the cities of uh, um, Greece, or the Greek Empire. And um, this particular city, in fact, they had two port cities. And all the ships plying far east to Europe most stopped there. And all the vices you can think of where a modern city like that could experience, they were experiencing it over there. Paul plants the church, and then he goes to do some work in Ephesus. And some of the business uh, partners of a lady that was also doing business in the church called Chloe um, traveled to Ephesus and hopefully uh, uh, I mean hopefully and, and uh, presumably they met um, with Paul and gave Paul quite a number of reports about what the church was going through. That made Paul write three letters to the church leaders trying to address some of those things. Two letters were discovered. So the two letters made their way into the Bible and we have 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. But there should be 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians and 3 Corinthians. We don't know where the 3 Corinthians went to. But the test alluded to the fact that there was a missing test that maybe one day we'll find it. But that church was a very problematic church. And uh, the understanding of love was very challenging, and that is what I'm going to open it up to us. Whether uh, Paul's examination of that test is very strong, or that is how it's supposed to be, because it's going to challenge you as much as it's going to challenge me even doing the teaching. He writes then, addressing several issues, several issues. 
And then this issue of speaking in tongues then comes up because they have now become so spiritual that they were not even communicating with uh, intelligible language anymore. You know, so when they speak to you, they speak in tongues to be able to show your level of your spirituality and they expect you to understand the tongue. So if I want to speak to uh, Abna, for instance, instead of saying that Abna, can I have the microphone or something, I just go, Yirikatunu <laughs> Mukushata. <laughs> they are very spiritual because you understood what I was trying to say. <laughs> you know, so now tongue speaking became the most uh, important thing, and they will have other people come to visit the church, and people will even communicate in tongues and expect them to understand what they were saying. So now it became a nuisance. So Paul then had to deal with the issue. Now, what was happening was that people will even come to church. And they will not give respect to uh, the poor and the needy. And especially those rich ones would have their club within the church. Sometimes when it's time for communion, in those days, communion is not the way we do it. Communion is a whole meal. It's complete food. So you eat and get satisfied. That's the way you, in fact, that is the way communion is done, actually. Uh, it got to a point where the church was dealing with hundreds and thousands of people and so they could not cook for everybody, so we just had to. And the Bible teaches that even, even at the Passover meal, Jesus did that at the end when they have eaten. And then he took the bread and he used the bread as a symbolic sign, and then the wine as a symbolic sign. But the whole communion thing has to do with a whole bunch of the lamb, the, the bitter herbs, and everything like that. So that's how they used to practice. So what would happen is that some of these affluent, very rich people would just come in, and what they would do is they would eat and drink. And those days, the communion, was a, the communion wine was a normal communion. It was a kosher wine, which is about 15%. Uh, and they would drink. And they would be drunk, some of them. And then when the poor comes in, they don't have any food to eat. Because once you drink, your appetite <laughs> kicks in. And, and they eat and eat and eat and eat. And so Paul had been told all those things. In fact, some of the information he had was even strong that when he had addressed the situation, he had to come back and apologize that he was even too hard because obviously he didn't get the whole uh, uh, system um, right. So he comes to 13 and starts dealing with this tongue thing that a lot of people have used this to bash Pentecostals as though we can't speak in tongues. No, we have to speak in tongues because there are two kinds of tongues. There is the, what we call the diverse kinds of tongues. The diverse kinds of tongues is the tongues that is human tongues. I may not be able to speak it all, but then somebody can understand it. So, for instance, French is diverse kinds of tongues. Uh, German is diverse kinds of tongues. I don't speak German. However, there's somebody who, when you speak German, can understand. Then there's new tongues. New tongues is a language that has never existed. It's not French. It's not everything. So that new tongue then becomes our prayer language. It is that new tongue that when you speak, you speak mysteries where demonic agents can't understand. And when you speak it, it becomes like a Morse code. It is a coded language between you and God. But then when we come together, people can speak in tongues and they can speak in diverse tongues. And based on that, somebody can interpret. One, my, a friend of mine came to visit me, spent uh, 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 um, the night in the house. And the morning, this neighbor of mine, who is a Yoruba uh, girl, uh, said that I never knew that uh, uh, I was Yoruba. And I said, I'm no, I'm no, I'm no Yoruba. He said, no, 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 no. Because I heard you speaking Yoruba in the bathroom. And that my friend was actually in the bathroom praying in tongues. And, 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 and I said, no. And he, she was able to tell everything that was being said. Then I realized that it was her when she was taking a bath, she was speaking, speaking in tongues. And so the neighbor heard the language. So that might not be known to him but, uh, that was Pastor Joe, that was only known to him, but somebody who spoke the language understood very clearly. There was another meeting where somebody was speaking, they were speaking Chinese, you know, pure Chinese, Mandarin. And the, 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 uh, moi, toi, you know, <laughs> and he was speaking, uh, and this Chinese person gave his life to Christ because what was do, he was saying was addressing her situation. That 
He didn't even know. It is still diverse kinds of tongues. For the person speaking it, he doesn't understand it. But then, so that's what happened in the day of Pentecost. They were speaking in diverse kinds of tongues. And there were people who have come from different parts of the world to celebrate Passover and uh, wheat of fe- uh, uh, Feast of Wheat. And they were understood. But some of them speaking did not understand what they themselves were speaking. That is diverse kinds. But then there was also new tongues. That's what Mark talks about. He said that you have power to cast out demons and you speak with what? New tongues. He didn't say diverse kinds of tongues. New tongues. So new tongues is a whole new creation. Now they are taking the new tongues to another level. Because when you take new tongues, you don't speak new tongues to human beings. That's why when you speak new tongues, you speak it unto who? Unto God. Are you hearing me? And that is why when we come together, we cannot speak in your tongue because nobody should be intrusive. If I'm trying to speak to my God, what, what, what do you want to know what I'm talking to my God about? However, if I, speak up, if I pick up the microphone and I just started uh, 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 open uh, your Bibles to uh, uh, Matthew 2-3, two, two, as soon as you open, I say, Rather, and I'm expecting, I'm expecting you to understand it. That's what Paul said, that you are mad. When anybody walks in there, he will say, aren't you mad? Because at the end of the day, can you imagine, uh, 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 Robert wants to usher, or Ben wants to usher somebody and say, kwa kwa twa, mwa, mwushukukun dini mi kwa, maza, maku, mike, maka, tarwa, mabo, rakatabusunde, mwa, mwa, shakwa, shakwa, shakwa. And they expect you to understand it. And if you don't understand it, you are what? You are kana. You are Kana. And so then he dedicates. And he said that you doing this don't even work in love. And you have enthroned the subject of tongue speaking above the material, the basic of our faith, which is love. So now he wants to tell us about the rewards of love. This one test we do today, and the next week we deal with another test. He wants to talk about the rewards of love. But before I do that, let me just break down verse 8. It is what it says that it says love never fails. So the question is, can love fail? Now, if love can fail, then does it mean that you didn't have love in the first place? I didn't say that. We are just dealing with scripture. If love never fails, is it possible? Is it possible? That when we claim we walked in love, was it fake? And we failed the test. Divorce. Pastoral relationship. Church relationships. Friendships. Does it mean that when you said, I love you? Because if love never fails then what failed cannot be called love. Pure and simple. So before we journey on love, we must first evaluate whether it's love or it's emotions that is dealing with it. Because if it is love, at least according to this test, it can never fail. So it's possible you didn't work in love in the first place. Because if you truly work in love, it should never fail. The rewards of love makes us fine human beings. Let me say it again. The rewards of love makes us fine human beings. Because the whole idea of we being called human is simply the word human. That means you are rational. That means you are empathetic. That means you are sympathetic. That means that you have feeling. That means that you, 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 you know what it means to be humane. You don't treat people in an awful way. You, you, you make sure that the, the people are, are, are brought to a place where they can thrive and do what God has called them to do. Hate 
makes one repulsive. As a result, we must strive to walk in love to benefit from its rewards. And so, writing to the church in Corinth, Paul then tries to tell them that you claim you are spiritual, you are not. Maybe an American will say, You in? You in? You in spiritual? You claim that you, you can speak in tongues. You can speak all the pamphilias and the buntus, the iconium and everything else. You can speak in tongues and, 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 and bears will go on holiday. Boko loko zogo, brando robo, migogo. Even me, sometimes when the Lord comes upon me so pretty, I've shocked myself that some of the tongues that comes out of my mouth, I'm like, whoa, did I pray that tongues? When it comes out, it dead and it's hot, like beauty men. The devil can't touch it. Hallelujah. That one, you move from the shibri level. You know what the shibri? Shibri, 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 If you are at that level, please move on. You've stayed there for too long. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, and the tongues that makes you feel like you want to sneeze, that you can't sneeze. Please. Move on. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I was telling somebody that I went to missions and we shared the same room. And I tell you, I've never seen such an awful uh, uh, um, snoring. I said, look, if you want to snore, snore properly. Contact uh, that George, uh, that Jerry. These guys make you know that. I mean, I woke him and I said, come on. If you're going to snore, snore. And stop that. <laughs> When Israel, when Israel, and I thought my door was, was breaking down. I'm like, what's going on? Next door was at a job. It was like, it was some AK 47s. He said that was angels. That's what we call, we call snoring. You gotta, if you're gonna snore, snore. No, it's like eating uh, uh, frogs. If you're gonna eat, eat juicy, fatty, one, you don't go for, you know. <laughs> so, so if you're going to pray in tongues, pray in tongues properly. <laughs> oh, we started 20 years down the line. He said, no, go deep. Let the demons hear it and run. <laughs> but anyway, Enough of the jokes. <laughs> they have grown their tongues, but they have killed their love. And now they are using tongues to bash people. And you know the Bible talks about the gift of interpretation of tongues. So now what got to a point when that people meet other people and first the, 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 the problem was that they expect you to understand the tongues. Now move on to another level. If you can't at least understand the tongues, you must interpret it you know so sometimes you know we go to meetings this, this doesn't happen because our church has become very west, west night but those days when pentecostal move was pentecostal move after praise and worship you go to worship after worship then the worship leader will say shall we all be silent and hear the word of the lord no these days after that they do special song of ministry and we sit and hear the word so everybody be silent everybody will be silent then somebody will just start they'll be quiet then somebody will respond my children my children <laughs> my, my, my children my children i am the lord i have come to bless you i have come to do this i've come to do that they say after you they stop then the person will go there. One day, somebody went off about three minutes, no stop. He came out to the Bible, 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 he came out to the Bible. Then the person, my children, I have come to bless you. Then he stopped. Somebody said, no, you cannot go. <laughs> this is not and tell me the interpretation is just two seconds. <laughs> at least 
at least the length, the length, the length of the tongues should have to be consistent with the debitation. You cannot go three minutes and then two seconds. You have, no, it doesn't work that way. You know, long time ago, in uh, those days, we were not FCI. We were uh, dealt with Corinthians. I think maybe we should have a refresher course one of these Wednesdays. It would be very good because it's, it's one of the most interesting churches you can think of. I mean, interest. Everything that was bad. But it helped us because Corinth has helped us shape our churches. Because the way we should take communion is coming. The way we should marry is coming. Because of all the things. I mean, people were actually, somebody was actually having sex with his father's wife. And the church was enjoying it. I mean, it, 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 the church in Corinth is something else. So, so, so that's why I said that if I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I am only a sounding gong or a clanging cymbal. That's why he's, he was coming up. Because they were using the tongues to bash everybody and yet love was in there. If I prophesy and I give the prophecy and I can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge and if I have faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. So Paul had to put his foot down and try to tell, because at some point he had to tell them that you are kids, I will bring Cain and I will whip your backside. Meanwhile, he's talking to people who are older than him. They were older than him. And he said, if I give all I possess to the poor and, and, and give uh, 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 over my body to be uh, uh, burnt and, and so on and so with that love, I gain nothing. Then he comes to tell us the benefits or the rewards of love. And remember, this is the context in which he was talking about it. That spirituality is no spirituality. And sometimes when you make direct analogy, people are not comfortable. But that is the same thing Jesus did in Luke 16. When he says that, if you don't know how to handle money, who will give you true riches? That is huge. In other words, Jesus is telling you and I that our ability to handle money is directly proportional to the spirituality we have. So if somebody doesn't know how to handle money, then he doesn't have spirituality. Wow. Then he goes on to say that there are two masters. Money and God. Which one do you serve? Wow. So he's saying the same thing. He said that love is the key. Because all the spiritual things that you're doing and jumping and shouting and trying to see that you are more spiritual than other persons and stuff like that. You know, somebody sits there and all he's praying is and you look down upon that person because you can go, and, 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 <laughs> you know, even you know, men of God, sometimes when we prophesy, you don't take it seriously, so we have to change the tactics, because it's not, it's, 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 it's not acceptable, when I can, and the Lord is saying this, and I believe that three people here, this, 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 no, Pastor Shadrach, that's not the way to do it, three, 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 to my, <laughs> Then you take it seriously. Let's look at the rewards. It says, it makes you humane. Turn to somebody, stand up, stand up, and love makes you humane. The benefit is that you become very patient. So if you are not patient, there's a tendency that you're not working. Say it. Is that love is what? Patient. So if you're somebody who's not patient, I want everything now, 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 now. There's a tendency that. But the reward you get also by working in love is that you become patient. So you're patient with people. You know, sometimes people do stuff and people say, oh, pastor, you know, I have to put your foot down. He said, the foot is already put down a long time. But it doesn't mean that when you put your foot down, you just have to bash people. Sometimes you give people the chance to. Oh, you know, now you're becoming to you know, oh, how can the person be pregnant? How can they, 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 let me tell you something. Do you know how many people are doing those things, but they have not ended up with pregnancy? Sometimes you give people patience because of love to reform, because we're all different. So I say, oh, but we all live in the same womb. No, some people live left, some people live down right. You might be the same womb, but different corners. Hallelujah. 
Some live at a place where they give candy cakes all the time. So it all depends. <laughs> Love is patient. Love is kind. That's the next, next reward you get. When, 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 when you walk in love, he's telling the guys. And, and remember, even though we can take this in isolation and teach it, this teaching is within context of the behavior of the church in Corinth. Because they were not patient with one another. They were not kind to one another. Like those rich guys who come and eat the food and drink the wine and get drunk. Paul said that, fast you go out and eat, the poor who should be. So what he's trying to say is that those who have got food at home to eat, relax. Let those who don't have food at home, let them eat. When they have finished eating, or you can even pretend you are eating, take just a morsel of bread or uh, something, meat. Fast the poor people eat. Let them fill their tummies and then you can fill yours. But no, you go on the table, there are 14 of you, the chicken legs are 14, and they reach out and take three. I mean, some Christians can be so wonderful. Have you seen that? I've seen that. We went, went to a particular place, we were on the table, and the, the, the food there was exactly the number that was seated there. Somebody took three. And then when the hostess came and said, oh, actually, matter of fact, they don't have any reserve over there. But when the three person have conquered the whole thing, somebody didn't guess how to eat. If you have food at home, why don't you eat at home? Eat at home. So that somebody who is not as privileged as you are can be blessed. So this is well tailored to a condition and a situation. It is not just in a general form, but we can use it in a general form like I'm saying right now. It's a be kind. They were not kind. But that is a reward you get. Because when you walk in love, you become kind. You are not repugnant. You are not repugnant. You, 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 don't, you don't stick in the nostrils of people. You don't. You are loved by people. Let me continue. It, it says, it does not envy. So, so when, 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 when you start envying, don't question envy. Question love. You understand what I'm trying to say? When, when, when your, your car, petrol, goes, don't question your engine. Question your pocket. Question the tank. Because if there's fuel in it, it will hurt, it will run. So it's like fuel is not in it, then you are, you, are, you, are, you are attacking the engine. No. The same way. So once you realize that you're working in envy, don't bother about envy. Go repair love. And when you repair love, automatically, envy will disappear. It does not boast. You know, it is those who haven't seen life that what the little thing they have, they begin to No. We are different. And sometimes the people that you feel you're better than, they have not shown you what they have. You know, as a pastor, you get into people's life all the time. And one thing I must confess my sins, I was shocked. Somebody came to me and we were talking. The person was taking my advice on some investment he has to make in, because he has this money in his account and blah, blah. And the person mentioned, I said, 40 something or 30 something thousand. I, I was sitting there with a falling. I must be honest. I was sitting there with a falling. Because not in my wildest dream will I think that this person sitting in front of me will have that kind of money. Doesn't even drive a good car. And the way the person carries himself. And I said to myself, you see, that's why they tell you that never judge a book by the cover. You boast and you think that because you drive something or you're, you're better. No, no. Uh, that reminds me of this pastor. This young man, he was invited to go and speak in a conference. He didn't do his research. But what he didn't know was that somebody saw him preaching and the person liked him. So he invited him by a millionaire's club. So then he comes and he picks the microphone and everything was talking about his car and his house and his this and his that and that. And one person who was sitting there got a bit irritated. So he just retorted from the crowd. He said, my friend, preach the word and stop all that you're talking about because we take Bentleys and Rolls Royces to shopping and things like that. I was shocked. Most. Love is not there. Because the father someone is wearing shorts and t shirt I hear me, you know. <laughs> if I, the, the 
fact that somebody is driving some particular car does it mean I, I had a, I had a, I had a, I had the privilege to to be the guest of 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 the then uh, chief cashier for the Nigeria uh, the Federal Bank. And 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 any time they go into downtown Lagos, he's got his five four four car. When you sit in the car, air condition inside is beautiful, but the outside is all dented. But inside, up air conditioning, everything. And so I was speaking to them, they said, oh, the reason why we use that car to the city, because you can be guaranteed any time you go to the city, somebody will, <laughs> I don't know, but apparently it's getting better in Lagos now, but then the, the traffic situation, you drive on the pavement and everything, it was very terrible. So they are setting cars in the house. So if you meet somebody like that in the city and you see the car is driving, you will judge, come and see the house there. There are about three or four garages. There's mean cars, not so mean cars. So <laughs> So you don't judge, even, even let's put it this way, even if the person doesn't have anything, you still don't boost over people. Are you hearing me? And so as soon as you realize that there is a need to boast, you have a problem. The love is not there. So the reward is that. It's a, it is not proud. Now proud is not demeanor, even though it can result in demeanor. There are people who are soft-spoken and we automatically take them to be very humble. And there are people who are loud and we automatically take, take them to be proud. It has nothing to do with demeanor, even though sometimes it results in that. Pride is your ability or someone's ability to reject the truth of God's word by biblical definition. And once you reject the truth of God's word, you open up yourself for destruction. That is why the Bible says that it goes before a fall. You do that. And so once that happens, you realize that you don't have love. But when you have love also, the reward it gives you is that you can be in any estate with people. Some MP gave a very powerful analogy about uh, 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 one of my, I call my distant mentor, Nelson Mandela. I was so blessed. I mean, I, I followed the guy so much, I had the opportunity to go to the very house he grew up in, he lived in, and it, his chair, I sat in it. When I sat in the chair, I prophesied. But this is what the MP said. When he came to give states, he came on the state, uh, what's it called again? Uh, whatever. He said when we were about to open the door for him, he opened the door himself. And then he shook hands with the gentleman that opened. Later when he was interviewed, he said that he's been doing the job for how many years? No head of state or anybody that he has opened door for that has taken recognition of him. And what killed me is that when he uh, 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 was about to give the speech, this MP was saying that for him, that is what tells him that man was a great man. He said he met with him and then we're having a chat, you know, they do all their cocktails or whatever, whatever, whatever. And then he said, he said that, oh, um, I will not be able to be at the I think they had another function after that or something. And I will not be able to be there because my wife, let's say my wife Dorothy, is not feeling very well, so I have to go there. Oh, no, no, it's my daughter. Let's say my daughter, Debbie, is not very, feeling very well, so I have to go and fetch my wife, uh, Dorothy. And, and this is what he just conversation had. So when the whole thing was finished, he delayed a bit, and he met him up again. So as he was going, and he said to him, that extend my well wishes to Debbie and say hello to Dorothy. The man nearly died. He said, with all these 600 or something parliamentarians, including the House of Lords, and this conversation he had with him about an hour or two hours prior to this time, the man was able to remember him. He was able to remember the names he mentioned and what he would say, uh, pleasantries. He was saying that. And, and, and that tells you, when you are humble, you are able to relate to people of lower estate. And it is love. That generates that. Brothers and sisters, we will be so shocked that when the trumpet shall sound, people you expect to be there might not be there. Those you don't expect to be there will be there. And then the last surprise will be you yourself. <laughs> Pride. You don't look down upon people, regardless of your qualification, regardless of your beauty. You, got, you see, especially what you don't have 
that was given you. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you, know, you don't cry pride about that. You are short, you are tall, you are handsome, you are, you are fair, you are slim, you are, no. And sometimes these are the things. And he's saying that benefit of love makes you humble, not proud. It does not dishonor others. This is another thing they were doing in the church. When you walk in love, you have that benefit that anybody you see, regardless of their background, you are able to embrace. You are not racist. You don't dishonor people. You don't disgrace people unnecessarily. There are some people you need to, but unnecessarily. No, the Bible says that. It says, mark them that cause division. In other words, those who have put themselves to destroy the church, you must expose them. But apart from that condition, even that is for the good of the church. But you don't, as a matter of character, just dishonor people. And I realize that sometimes when conversations are going on, and anybody comes in, people turn the conversation to be about them. If it's not about them, we can't have any conversation. They cannot be happy for other people when they are exalted. You know, recently, I'm reading something on Facebook on this person that has accomplished a lot. You know, well, granted, some people are taking it too far. But at the same time, people are making unnecessary comments. Somebody's achieved something, be happy for that person. The day you achieve, God will cause people also to be happy for you. But the subtle competition that goes on in the church, dishonor, others know. It is not self seeking. It doesn't look for what I can gain. And that's what has become church. And you have to break that spirit in the body of Christ. You look at your life, you realize that. 95% or 96% of everything you do, you look at benefit for you. And if you don't find any benefit for you, why should you? So we only visit our friends. We only visit those we can benefit from. We only show kindness to those we can get something from. But it should not be. The benefit and reward of love is it makes you not become self-seeking, selfless. It's not easily angered. And that is a key. For a very long time in my life, I used this as a measure to find who loves me and who doesn't love me. So, so, so if, if, if I make a mistake and the first reaction is anger, grrr, I know that. It's a superficial relationship. When you don't even know the truth about it. Love is not easily angered. Oh, you hear what this person said about you and blah, 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 blah. Take it easy. You have not heard the person's Maybe he said that, but he said it in a different context. Maybe he said that. And people understand things by context. Some people also just understand things. <laughs> That's a fact of life. People understand things by context, and some also people understand things. You understand? And so you have to be able to understand, differentiate between those who understand things by context and those who just understand things. So he said, oh, where I come from, we use bad words a lot. That doesn't mean bad words. You know, so like the F word. We use it a lot. And when you go come here, F word is a big deal. But in Ghana, it's not a big deal. They use it in the context of stupid. Oh, this boy is F this. And they say it casually. So the fact that somebody's used that word doesn't mean it's curse. It's just, you know, I remember a choir went to, um, uh, the then uh, choir went to, um, um, to what time store? to sing. They were invited in the convention to sing. And the pastor that came to preach was from uh, Ghana. And so he was preaching and giving his testimony. And he said, he said that, you know, those days I didn't have shoes by the glory of God. I got myself a shoe. My shoe had a hole in it and blah, 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 blah. Cut a long story short. He was trying to tell them how God blessed me with, with a shoe and everything else. And one day God told him that take your shoe and give it to somebody. So God pointed a person and he said to the Lord that, Lord, I can't do that. I can't give my shoe because I've never had a good shoe in my life. This is my first time I've had a good shoe in my life. How can I give a shoe? So it's the Lord said, take your shoe and give it to the... So I kept arguing with the Lord and the Lord told me, take your effing shoe and give it away to the person. <laughs> he didn't say anything wrong with it. That's contest. He didn't say anything wrong with it because of where it's coming from. That word is not derogatory. You know, and 
No, immediately. Ask them. People started picking their bags and walking away. The whole church, half empty. People just walk. I mean, if he even used it, but he said, God said to him, take. <laughs> I said, Quiet. God has started swearing. And he used F language. Wow. <laughs> God, I've said that swearing. And then I did too. And uh, it's sad. And at that time, at that time, this pastor came and was preaching, and then he wanted to make an exact illustration, so he pointed to somebody in the crowd, and he said, uh, you know, hey, where were you, Peckham? He pointed to somebody in the crowd, and he said, oh, the brother over there. No, no, no. The brother, I mean, the fat brother, the fat. I like. I wanted the air to open to disappear but where it's coming from uh, is descriptive it's no derogatory contest so sometimes sometimes you'll be there and somebody may turn up to you and tell you a story the story is true by picking it out of context you know sometimes people say oh, oh if i get you i'll kill you it doesn't mean that he will literally kill you somebody who understood in the contest it means that oh, Charlie, you have to solve that issue because i think he's very upset but then somebody say hey now somebody's plotting your murder <laughs> You know, so you don't easily get angry. When you walk in love, it becomes a reward. It takes a long time. That's why the Bible says God himself, because he's in love, he suffers long. Long suffering. Amen? That is a bad reward. Hallelujah. He keeps no record of wrongs. That is what you and I, we are very guilty of. If we say we really walk in love, we shouldn't count. He did it again. He did it again. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said that Jesus said you have to forgive how many times? I didn't hear you. How many times? Seventy what? Times seven. Not seventy. Seventy times seven. So if you can multiply, we can have a sign. I can't even multiply seventy times seven. It will be four hundred and four hundred and ninety, isn't it? In a day. Uh, yeah, seven times seven is forty-nine. So seventy times seven is four hundred and ninety. All right, in a day. So it says. For you to react, the person must offend you 490 times. <laughs> In a day. But we put record of wrongs. Do you realize that? Do you realize that that is what became our preaching also? I've stopped preaching that way anyway, but for some season, that was become our preaching that God has a notebook that He's recording everybody, but the Bible says He puts it in the sea of forgetfulness, He throws it in the blood. So genuinely don't remember. And that is the way we ought to act. When you are full of love, you keep no records of uh, wrongs. You don't come as a pastor, you've done it again. No? Last week, last two weeks, I wrote it down. Last three weeks. And some people, they have got chabrain. But funny enough, they don't use their chabrain for mathematics and biology and chemistry. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a waste of resources. God is giving you chabrain. Use it for mathematics. For memory, scripture memory. You know, memorize. Some of us, we don't have, we have a problem. Yeah, that's why I always have my, my, my iPad. I can't remember scriptures. I know scriptures, but I can't remember scriptures. I admire those who know scriptures. I mean, they, they can memorize scriptures. Oh, John 3, so, no, 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 no. So, Matthew 5, no, 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 I, I, I can't. So every time I know scripture, I study by concepts, I go back and I check the scripture. But if God has given you that powerful memory, use it that way. Some people, they, they, are, they don't remember anything but wrongs. Record of wrongs. They don't even have to write it down. They are they appropriated. They can tell what time, what minute, how it happened, and everything. And if somebody's narrating the story, they make a mistake. They say, no, 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 no. It wasn't like that. This is the way it was. It's just. Let me just finish. I thought I'd be able to finish this today. Uh, no easily angered. No record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. A friend of mine divorced. Within, if I'm not exaggerating, 30 minutes or one hour, it happened, I had information. Later on, in the months ahead, they came together. I didn't know until six months. <laughs> when the divorce happened, within an hour, I've had information that they've divorced. When they came together and repaired the relationship, I never heard anything about it. People like wrongs. 
that tells you that the way we think love is entrenched in the church, it is no. It does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Every time you have good story or good news and you tell somebody, as you are telling the person, look at the person's face. If the person is like, <laughs> it means that. <laughs> Suspect. <laughs> I, just, I just got myself a brand new Mercedes. Do you know how it happened? Oh, I was believing God. Last week, pastor was preaching about this and that. And I said, I'm going to stand in faith. And God came through and blah, 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 blah. Oh. Is that all? How many times did your father drive a Mercedes? He had a Mozanga Volvo. Mozanga Volvo is a, a chopper. You know those, I bet chopper. Those uh, old, the black ones. That's what your father had. You yourself, you travel on AD11. You know AD11? After the death of Christ, 1111. AD11. And God has blessed your brother with a car. Be excited. Even, even jokingly tell the brother, ah, this time you have to give me a lift too. So now you have to pick me too. So we can all come to church. You have to enjoy too. That's what it's about. When God gives you something new, it's for everybody. It's for the ministry. It's for, it's for your family. It's for the family of God. But some people just, and, 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 and they, we sing songs like, I love you with the love of the Lord. I don't even like the one we say, I love you with the love of the Lord. I can see in you the line. The glory of the Lord. Yes, I love. They love with you, but they want you dead. They want you starved. They, 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 you know, but the reward of, of, of love make you rejoice in truth. Rejoice when something good happens to someone. And you know what? That alone, psychologists will tell you, gives you long life. It takes stress away from your life. And most importantly, it makes you a better person before God. Amen. Permit me to use a, a, a worldly language. It gives you good aura around you. There is good aura. So, so, so you may not have talk, but you ooze something. That everybody that sees you, they want to come close to you. Because you don't stink. When you love and you walk in that, and the rewards of love is all around you. You are like a fruit tree. Everybody wants to come and pluck some and eat it. So you become an epitome, epitome of grace and mercy. Everybody wants to associate with you. But when you are full of hate, narcissistic behavior, always looking at negativity and stuff like that, you're repugnant. People look at you and they don't want to come close because you stink and, and, and it's only those who stink that get attracted to you because they come to add their stinkiness to you so you can have a very big odor we will continue next Wednesday God willing hallelujah our mission is raising overcomers setting the captives free Freedom Center International is here to support you in every step that you take with the Word of God as you seek spiritual and emotional wholeness. And we hope you've been blessed by today's message. Worship with us at 38 Upper Wickham Lane, Welling, Kent, DA16, 3HF or give us a call on 0207-277-8700. You can also visit us online at fcichapel.org. And remember, there is progress in freedom.